Taking refuge from the dreary weather one January afternoon in Galway, an unusually large crowd packed inside the city's cathedral for the ordination of two young Catholic priests. It's a scene that displays the essence of traditional Irish heritage. For nearly 1,400 years, the Catholic Church assumed the role of spiritual authority, influencing politics, society, and culture. For many, being Catholic and Irish went hand in hand, especially after, as Dr. John Cunningham of the National University of Ireland Galway explains, Ireland gained independence from Britain, a country that was primarily Anglican in 1922. I suppose it was much more than a, a, a church uh, in uh, the Ireland of the of the 20s, 30s, 40s, and. And 50s. So much so that in 1946, Pope Paul VI called Ireland, quote, the most Catholic country in the world. Not a far-fetched statement considering at the time, around 90% of the population attended Mass every week. But that was then. This was the scene from the ordination at 3 o'clock, hardly an open seat. And this was the view just a few hours later for the 5 o'clock Mass. Among those not in attendance is 18-year-old Connor Byrne from Galway. On paper, I am Catholic, I, but I don't go to church unless I'm with granny, it just makes me feel better. And otherwise, I don't go to church or do anything like that, I'm not religious. Lack of belief and troubles within the church, Connor says, is why he stepped away from his Catholic faith. The last 10 years, where, where all the, uh, that all came out, where all the, uh, where the, Christian, the Christian church was doing children all those years ago, like my dad was one of them. Scandals, along with modernization and secularization, claim responsibility for the drastic decline in mass attendance, especially for millennials, causing concern for some older members of the church. The church to them got dull, and there was nothing there exciting to bring them there. It was considered an action you did once a week to keep your name up in the community. For Daniel Gallagher, Christianity is more than attending a routine service. But that entering into a relationship, a daily relationship with Jesus Christ, is something much deeper, much stronger, and much more real. And something which an awful lot of people have missed out, about, missed out on because of that attitude. That it was very shallow and it only was compartmentalized to an hour on a Sunday morning. At 26 years old, Daniel is preparing for what he believes is his life's calling. I think the fact that I've made the choice to be a deacon, to be a priest, is that the church is very much my life, my daily life. In July, Daniel will be the third and final priest of the year to be ordained in the Archdiocese of Galway. To the left of Daniel is Father Dearmond Hogan, who is the parish priest in Oranmore, just outside of Galway City. Currently, Daniel is serving there as a deacon alongside Father Hogan. My hope for them is that they experience the access to people's hearts and truth and lives that over the last 25 years I've experienced. At 50 years old, Father Hogan says he's witnessed a shift in Catholic Ireland. And that generation will be bereaved for the church gone. And I understand that, and I appreciate that, and I suppose there's a part of my heart that's bereaved for the church gone too. The change, he says, has taught him more about Christianity. There's aspects of it as we shouldn't be bereaved for. There's aspects of the power and the pomp, and the church never works. The church is never good when it's associated with power. Even with the change in the number of mass goers in Ireland now hovering around 20%, Father Hogan says he isn't worried. I think all that's happening isn't so much that numbers are falling, but that the Irish are becoming more honest. Despite Father Hogan's optimism, Daniel says younger priests can't afford to wait for people to come around. If we don't, be, if, we, if we're not on top of our game, if we don't know what the church is up against, or definitely what the church is engaging in, well then, I think that society can progress without us. Someone on the other side of the religious spectrum, like Connor, agrees. Me personally, and I, I think I speak for a lot of people in, in Irish, in the Irish, they shouldn't have to follow any, any other religion that they, they shouldn't be forced to, they shouldn't believe in what they want to believe. Still with the increasing secularization of Ireland, as seen with the legalization of same-sex marriage in 2015, Daniel says more than ever, the church can't give up. In the midst of a changing society, in the midst of uh, 
in the midst of different opinions, in the midst of complicated situations, the church stands and holds up what it celebrates. As a soon-to-be priest in 21st century Ireland, Daniel says that in order for the church to be effective, it starts with him. To be someone who has hope and to be someone who has joy and let that shine, you know, because I think a lot of the time we, there's a saying in Ireland, to, as this sounds very cliche, but there is a great saying in Ireland, it's always better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Another light in Daniel's life is Pope Francis, with whom he had a unique encounter while studying in Rome. I got a bit overwhelmed and just went in for a hug, and the Pope hugged me. And then, uh, yeah, so it was really nice. And he asked me in Italian, was the faith in Ireland down? And I said it was, but we still had it. This humbling accountability for the transition of the church of yesterday is something that Dr. Cunningham sees as the new identity for the Catholic Church in Ireland. I suppose, um, and I mean some church leaders seem aware of this, like Archbishop uh, Jermot Martin in Dublin and so on, that it'll have to reconcile itself to just being a church. As for Father Hogan, he says he looks forward to the changing model for the future church led by Daniel and others. I think it's going to be the difference between a European car and an American car. Smaller, leaner and more efficient church.